So now there's a final concept which is called the ROC curve, right? So as of now we have seen that by changing your changing your threshold you can basically come up you can come up with a high model. So let's consider the same model, right? So now before we kind of go and understand area under the curve, let's say let's first understand what is the problem with precision and recall. So now let's take one particular case, right? So let's take y hat. Say one. Zero again, let's take a discrete example. Sorry, this is not y hat, this is y target. And let's take y hat. 0 0.8 say 0 0.6 and 0 0.5 right so in this case you have got three examples out of this two are positive and you have got the corresponding probabilities right so for some example you for example you don't want to so if you have a threshold so you say you have a threshold at 0.5 right so let's first take the example if you have threshold 0.5 the corresponding prediction of classes right so if you have threshold as 0 0.5 what is the predicted class here the predicted class is 1 right because your predicted probability for class 1 so this is always pro probability for class 1 is greater than 0 0.5 so predicted class is 1 here the predicted class is again 1 and here again the predicted class is so let's call this 0 0.4 for this the predicted class is zero right so if you have a threshold you clearly see that you are missing out on this particular example and this particular example right so you're incorrectly classifying them so say for some example for some business use case you are you you really don't want to miss out on picking up any of them like you don't want to miss out on an example which was actually a fraud so say one is fraud and zero is not fraud so you don't want to miss out on you don't want to incorrectly classify anything that was a fraud you are fine with predicting probably some of the some 20 30 false positives but you don't want to definitely miss out on something right so if that is the case what will you do here if you this is your model right so you cannot improve the model further let's say for for the moment for that's an assumption if you cannot improve the model what is the thing that you can do here uh, you are like okay I think I am fine with some false positives so let me change the threshold to a much lower value so let's say you change the threshold to 0 0.2 right so if you change the threshold to 0 0.2 the predicted class is 1 here it's also 1 it's also 1 so what happened now is you have predicted this also correctly you have predicted this also correctly sorry yeah you have predicted this incorrectly sorry this is something you have predicted incorrectly but you have predicted this also correctly right so this is exactly what you wanted right you are fine with this false positive this is a false positive right understand why this is something you have predicted as positive but in real life it is negative right so this is a false positive example so you are fine with some false positive examples but you are not fine with missing out on this one right which is was which was the case here so in this case this is the sample right so let me in the first case when you have 0.5 threshold you had incorrectly classified both of them and you had correctly classified here right whereas in this case you have correctly classified here you have incorrectly classified here but you have correctly classified here right which is exactly what you wanted you did not want to miss out on any of the one you did not want to mispredict the false you did not want to misclassify the false sorry the fraud examples the fraud examples have been picked up correctly here now let's say you want to for some reason you are like okay i am i am some for some reason for some very unknown reason i don't know what it is you say that okay i am i really don't care about uh, false positive and picking everything correctly what i really care about is everything that i say everything that i predict as positive should be absolutely be positive right so what you say is that okay let me so for that say you say a threshold of 0 0.75 so in this case you say one and if you 0 0.75 then it's zero then it's zero again right because in this case the threshold the pro predicted probability 0.8 is greater than 0 0.75 so the predicted class is one in this case the predicted class is zero because 0 0.6 is less than 0 0.75 and again this is also zero right so in this case you have only predicted one class as positive and you have predicted that absolutely correctly so you have just taken one prediction as positive but that is correct Right? you don't care about the fact that you missed out here probably for some reason you don't care right but that's exactly what we wanted right so all you can see is that in this case in the same model by changing the threshold you had a high recall here 
and in the same model if you just changing the threshold you have a high precision here right so this is this is this is a trade off right so in this case the precision was low in this case the recall is low so depending on what you want and the business use case you want there's a trade off between precision and recall that is something you have already understood and that's why you use f1 score now there's also something right f1 score is just about measuring them how if what if what is how do i choose the right threshold right how do i choose this right threshold how do i choose this what is what is the right threshold that i should go ahead with so this is a business call that you have to take and how do you what is a very easy way to do that is called auc so in auc what you do is this right so auc is basically a plot between sensitivity so it's called tpr true positive rate which is also goes by the name sensitivity also by the name recall so all of them are same terms don't don't get confused by the different terminology that you see everywhere so tpr or sensitivity or recall right so that is the thing that you're measuring here on this side you're measuring fpr fpr which is basically false positive rate and which is basically one minus specificity so what is tpr again tp by fn right tp plus fn tpr so you don't probably know tpr but you remember recall recall was everything of all the ones that were actually positive how many ones did i pick up so these are the total number of examples which were actually positive true positive so these are the ones which are predicted positive and all also true these are the ones which are negative predicted negative but were actually false which are basically positive examples so these are all in all positive examples and this is the ones you have picked up correctly yeah so false positive rate is out of the total negative examples in the case how many of you have them have you predicted it as positively right so this is what false positive rate is so tpr is a recall which is basically number of examples which are actually positive how many of you have picked up false positive rate is of the actual examples which are negative right how many of you of them have you predicted falsely right so this is what is a auc roc so this is what a roc curves looks like so this is what is a roc curve called roc curve is a plot between tpr and fpr right so you already know what is tp what is tp fn tp fpn all of this so this comes from the confusion matrix right so this is a confusion matrix you have tp fp fn tn right so this is actual positive actual negative this is spread positive spread negative right so from this we come up with the tpr and fpr values now the one thing to understand is uh this is a for every so given given my uh given my current prediction there is one positive this this is one confusion matrix right so tpr versus fpf i'm plotting i'll just get a single data point right how do i come up with a series of points so because if i'm trying to measure area under the curve right this is what the measure was called area under roc curve so i need to first plot a curve only then i can measure the area so how do you measure the area so first that first you have to figure out how to plot a curve right so the curve is nothing but by taking different thresholds you start from threshold equal to 0 and change it all the way to 1 and at different thresholds you basically measure both tpr and fpr and you plot them so if you plot them you get a nice smooth curve which is called the roc curve right an area under this particular curve is basically what you call the area under the curve right so kind of to make this point drive this point home let's take a proper example and understand what is the area under the curve so you have y hat and you have y right and let's say y target so at different thresholds so these are the prediction values it could be 0.8 0.6 point let's say 0.4 and 0.2 and let them be 1 0 One zero, right? So this is your target value. This is your prediction value. So point eight, point six, point four, point two, and these are your target values, right? So now, what is a so for different thresholds? As I explained, to plot an ROC, you have to basically check for different thresholds and figure out the TPR and FPR for both or for th that particular threshold and use that to plot, right? 
So what is TPR and FPR again is TP by TP plus FN FPR is FP by FP plus TN right so now at Y target so this is so now let's say threshold equals to zero so what is the predicted class predicted class would be everything is one right so threshold is zero everything is one right so what is your TPR so your confusion matrix looks like this right so how many now okay let's let's not try and plot that what is the TPR right so TPR is TP plus TP plus FN so what is TP here TP is total number of examples that you have predicted correctly right so they are actually in real life positive and you have also predicted them as positive right so this is the one which is these are two examples right this and this which are the ones you have picked up correctly so 2 by 2 plus false negative what are false negative the ones you have predicted as 0 but they are actually in real life 1 so there is 0 right so there is no example which is you have predicted as negative you have predicted everything every one of them as 1 so there is nothing false negative here so TPR is 1 FPR is total number of false positive how many are false positive false positives are you have predicted it as positive but they are actually in real life zeros so there are two such examples 2 by 2 plus 0 again 1 right so threshold equals to 0 you have TPR and FPR as 1 so this is your TPR this is your FPR and you have 1 comma 1 here right so this is the first point now you change the threshold to say point 2 or say point 3 so if you have point 0.3 your prediction is again 1 1 1 and this is 0 right so now what is your TPR right now so you have how many of your examples have you predicted correctly right so this is so this were actually true positive so you have picked both of them correctly right so 2 by uh, 2 plus false negative so neg there is one negative example but this is not false right because this is something you have predicted as negative and it's also negative in real life so it still is one what happened to fpr fpr is total number of false positive false positives are still false positive is now one right because there's this is the only example this is the only example which you have basically predicted as false so this was predicted as one but is actually zero so there's one false positive by total number of true negative which is again 1 so this is 0.5 so FPR is 0.5 and TPR is 1 right so 0.5 yes so you get the hang of the idea right so you start from threshold 0.3 and you keep on changing and for each of those thresholds you would get a set of TPR and FPR and the idea is once you do all of this you would probably get a model which looks like this something like this you join all of those points you would get a tpr fpr like this and you will get this is the roc curve so this is all and this area that you get under the curve is called the area under roc curve and this is this is called in short auc auc is nothing but area under curve and this is how you get the curve right so now you understand the entire domain of how you calculate area under curve now this is all how AUC is calculated what is the physical significance of AUC that is the some last part that we kind of need to understand before we fully understand what exactly is AUC so AUC how it is calculated is something you have understood right so also what you get is basically you add for different thresholds you get the pairs of sensitivity and specificities and you basically depending on what is the business use case and depending on what is the sensitivity you are you are fine to go ahead with right so for example you have a curve like this so this is your sensitivity and this is your 1 minus specificity right so depending on the business use case that you have you might choose to go with some threshold which is highly sensitive but is probably not that specific versus some threshold which is probably extremely highly very low sensitivity but very high specificity so this is a business call that you have to take at your end when you're working on whatever problem you're working on 
which is the corresponding point so basically you have for every threshold you have got basically all of the set of points right so you can choose the threshold so that's a problem that i addressed earlier right? so how do you choose the threshold this is how you choose the threshold you first construct the uc roc curve and depending on what is the corresponding use case you are working on when the business use case and depending on what is the sensitivity specificity you are fine to go ahead with you choose the point on curve that point on curve would basically for give you the threshold for which you can this point on the curve would basically give you the threshold that you can use for uh, thresholding your prediction values so if you remember what how did we use threshold values so you had what you obtained from the logistic regression curve was this right theta naught plus theta one x one plus theta two x two and so on so forth so this gave you the y prediction value which was basically the prediction what is the probability that it would belong to class one right and what you did was predicted class was equals to yc equals to one if yc prediction was greater than threshold equals to zero if the predicted sorry the predicted probability is less than threshold right so this choosing the threshold thing is something that you can kind of uh, use this AOC curve for detecting what is the threshold that you're fine with. Now to understand what is the physical significance of AOC. So AOC curve basically tells you how well your positive and negative probabilities are separated. So let's say this is how your negative probabilities look like, right? So these are your negative probabilities. So this is scale of zero to one, let's say. This is one, this is zero and this is how your positive probabilities look like right so you have a lot of probabilities and this is say somewhere around 0.7 so around 0.7 you see that all your negative probabilities are lying between 0.7 with the majority of them say lying around 0.3 and all your positive probabilities are lying above 0.7 and with say majority of them lying around 0.8 so if you, this is how your positive and negative probabilities are distributed basically to mean that there's a clear gap between them your, there's a particular threshold or particular values which separate your positive and negative probability. This is the case where you will have AUC equals to 1. But now the same. So it's the same example if you have say something like this. This is a negative and positive, right? Negative and positive. And you have a very clear demarcation. You still have AUC equals to 1. But say in case you have something like this, right? You have negative and this is how your positives look like so there's an overlap between them right so these are your negative and these are your positive right so there's an overlap between them in this case the uc value would be lower than one it would be some value between say 0 0.5 and say uh, some value between 0 0.5 and 1 and now let's say you have so let's say it would let's call this as 0 0.7 now you have some negative distribution like this Right, and your positive is just slightly ahead of it. So this is negative still, and this is a positive, right? And now there's a overlap is much increased, right? So this AOC value would be even be lower than this particular value, right? So AOC is 0.7 here, and AOC would be very close to 0.5. So let's say 0.5-ish, right? So these are negative probabilities. They're still towards your left. Your positive probabilities are still towards your right. But there's a huge overlap. In this case, the AUC would be roughly around 0.5. And this case, let's say, where you have complete positive probabilities on your left side and complete negative probabilities on your right side. But there's a clear distinction again. This is the case where you have again AUC equals to 1. Because now there's a clear demarcation between your positive. So all you need to do is in this case, if you have a case like this, all you need to do is change this definition of your class probabilities. If so for any given threshold, if a probability is greater than that threshold, you say that it's a negative class. If it's lower than that threshold, you say it's a positive class. But if for some reason you end up here, it's a clear, there's a clear demarcation, right? So then your AUC would be completely equals to one. So this is the whole idea behind AUC. AUC is basically an indication of how bad your models are separated from your positive and negative probabilities. So how well differentiated are your positive and negative probabilities? So that's what exactly you get. If your positive and negative probabilities are mixed together, then you would probably have a very bad AUC, roughly around 0.5. If your positive and AUC, negative AUCs are completely segregated, you would have a AUC point, AUC which is exactly equal to one. 
and depending on the amount of overlap that you have you would have different AUCs right so that is the whole physical intuition behind AUCs uh, we'll definitely be talking a bit more about AUCs in the upcoming lectures as well so that you get a more hands-on about this so this is how you can construct the AUC ROC curve so you first have to construct the ROC curve the ROC curve would give, basically give you the threshold and the FPR and TPR values for each. So we saw that for every threshold we had different FPR and TPR values. So what we now have got is basically this particular equation ROC curve gives you that particular. So for each threshold what are the FPR and TPR values. And using that you basically compute matrix.auc. So using the FPR and TPR values you can easily calculate the area under the curve which comes out to be 0.61 in this case. So now the final measure method to kind of measure the performance of a matrix and this is kind of very intuitive you already understand this negative log likelihoods right negative log negative logarithmic loss is something that we have already been introduced to in the previous session we understood why negative log likelihood is a good measure to measure your performance it's something if your model is very bad if your model is not performing correctly it penalizes it a lot more versus if your model is correcting classifying it correctly it penalizes a lot less right so that's why we use negative log likelihood loss and that's the same thing is a logarithmic loss and we understand that because we have used that as a loss function in logistic regression we clearly understand why this is a good measure of our model so i'm not going to talk much about that uh, so you can just as usual with test and prediction you can just use it directly to calculate right just for example it's the same thing right for regression you had used for regression you had used cost function which was msc loss and you use also MSC to measure the model performance. The same way you have used negative log likelihood in case of logistic regression as a cost function. And you use the same thing to evaluate model, right? So there's nothing much that is completely different here. Log on to Grey Atoms learning platform to unlock more free content. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.